Good morning, everybody. Can uh, everybody hear okay back there? We're all, we're all good? All right, uh, my name is Nick Gosser. I am the uh, North American Sales Manager for Calfstar. Uh, Calfstar specializes in automatic calf feeding and pasteurization uh, for calves. Um, so if uh, you guys are interested in taking a look at any of our products, uh, be sure to stop out at a booth. We have a booth out here in the exhibition hall, and then we actually have a booth outside <laughs> that is actually feeding live calves from our automatic calf feeder. Uh, so it's very interesting to come, come see. Um, housekeeping note they asked me to mention um, is this uh, seminar evaluation paper that they will collect here at the back uh, as we leave. And um, you can get with the gentleman back there to, to, to take them from you. Um, we have the pleasure today of sponsoring this uh, Apps for Daring and application for, for calving management. And uh, so without further ado, I won't take up any more of your time. I'd like to introduce to you uh, Dr. Gustavo Scheneman. Uh He is an associate uh, professor for the College of Veterinary Medicine at The Ohio State University. So thanks for coming. But Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Nick. Can you hear me well? Yes. I do have a funny accent, so you are going to have to, you know, follow me. So hopefully you can you can hear me well. So today, uh, basically, I, I just want to give you a, a, an example of how this technology, right? Most of my employees on the farm they do have all these cell phones, right? So, and they wanted to use it. So, I just explain a little bit, you know, an example on how we come up with this idea of developing a, a Calvin app. And, uh, and I hope at the end, it's a tool, and as any tool, you have to use it in the right way, right? There is also some uh, uh, drawbacks specific with this, and as I go in my presentation, I'll, I'll try to describe those uh, uh, either positive aspect as well as some of the challenge by using this uh, technology. So I, I really want to start, you know, uh, uh, acknowledging a few people that has been instrumental in, in developing this uh, uh, application, that we are now using some of the, um, uh, expanding to some other uh, areas of the farm. So one of my master's students that was involved and in, in doing the field work, and you're going to see now some of the information coming from this project. and. Uh, a number of dairy farms and especially large operation that has been willing and letting us uh, work with our employees, practicing veterinarians, and some of the funding uh, source that you need to get this uh, project done, either our dairy producer association in Ohio and, and, and the SARE program. This is a, a USDA program uh, uh, from the government. So this is the way, when I look at Calvin management, right, when I look at Calvin management, I think this is, this is the future of your farm, right? And, uh, and we always look at dead calf, right? And, uh, and, and uh, you monitor and you probably keep record of how many dead calf you have. Usually, when I look at the program, I have four components in my Calvin management program, right? One is the one that you do, especially when you work with cows, either in your Calvin and colostrum, you know, protocols. And I'm gonna make a difference between what is a protocol and what is an SOP, an standard operating procedure. I'm gonna differentiate the two because this is what we incorporate into the app, right? The SOP is what we use to monitor performance, how people do their job, right? And then there is two major components in a Calvin program, your nutrition management and your reproductive management, right? Especially for replacement. Right? And, and for replacement, you go from birth all the way to Calvin. Right? This is unique. Those farms that has one or two percent stillbirth, they do really well right here. Right? They have an amazing Calvin replacement program. And uh, especially dry cows is very important, a body condition, a, a dry off, hypocalcemia, and days dry, because those in one or other way are associated with a stillbirth. Right? And there is one thing there that is very important, is water quality. If you have water with high sulfate content, more than 1,500 ppm, you are going to have hypocalcemia. It's very difficult to control hypocalcemia. And the one that really suffer 
hypocalcemia is the pre-fresh cows, right? Because then is when you are trying to manage, you know, prevent hypocalcemia, right? So water quality, extremely important for your calvin management. Training and retraining and regular meeting for people, I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna give you just an example how important is that, and one of the biggest challenges is turnover. So every week I have new people, right? So you constant train and train and retrain your, 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 your employees. And on top of that, you have different shift. The day shift, the night shift, overlap shift, right? Communication became crucial between one shift to the next. And then records. And I think this is why our application, what we are trying to do with this application might add some value there, right? Especially to keep records in place. And the most important, I divide the records in three different uh, uh, ways. One are those leading risk factors. Those are the factors that are directly associated with the problem. If you want to do prevention, you have to monitor leading risk factors. You cannot monitor the lagging, right? The lagging you monitor just to monitor your, the performance of the farm. But you need to move and monitor the leading risk factors that are usually responsible why we do have dead calf on a farm. And the most important, I place people in the leading factor. I think it plays a role. It does not explain all, but it does have an influence because of what we do with cows on a daily basis. If you look at the data from the US, this is just the general data coming from the uh, USDA surveys. Uh, um, and you look at the 9.1 million cows that we have, this is what you get as far as a calving difficulty or dystocia, right? About 30% of cows, right, out of those 9 million cows, either first uh, calving cows or multiple cows, about 30%, they do need some sort of assistance, 30%, right? Especially, you know, this one and these two, you know, the non dystocia but they were assisted or the mild dystocias. I'm expecting my employees to be able to do it and know how to fix those problems, right? And what, how to communicate between them to be able to fix it. This one, it presents a different challenge. I'm not expecting them to do a C-section, right? And usually, those are things that are associated with your replacement program, right? Either how you select your sires, average daily gain of your heifers. Remember, the first 60 days in life of your heifers has a profound effect how she will perform later on in life, right? Milk production, growth, and reproduction. So, the same data, but just looking at those Calvin-related losses, right? And, and, and why we need Calvin? Ba basically, yeah, the cow has to go through delivery, and she will initiate lactation, right? This is how our producer make money. You need that, you know, going through Calvin, initiate lactation, but as well, you need a replacement. So you need some sort, the cow go through a uh, Calvin to be able to get milk and to be able to get the heifers. Out of all these, you know, from metritis, here, you know, the black bars, the top number represent the means, right? And the square white uh, box here represent the range. You know, how, you know, different farm has different prevalences, right? So metritis, RPs, you know, pregnancy loss, stillbirth. This is the focus of this particular presentation. It's about, the average for the U.S. is about 8.1% and it has a range between two or four up to 22%, depending on whether this is primipar or multipar of cows. And I know that you can get below 2%, right? Because when you look at the top 10% of the producer in, in the U.S., they are a number of farms with one or 2% stillbirth. And I define a stillbirth either a calf that is born dead or die within 24 hours, right? Those are normal gestation, no premature or abortion. So that's only accounting for normal gestation cows. 
And why is important the human element in this? I, I think the human element is, is, is crucial, that, uh, that especially know what to do and what to expect. Here is what I show you, 8%, 8.1% are on average stillbirth, and a range between 2 and 22%. But most of the calf, when you look at the data, most of the calf, they are alive. So if I go and I check the calf before parturition, I know that the calf is alive. But 48 hours later, he's on the record as stillbirth, right? So, and here you can see, you know, <clears throat> some of them, 80% about die at birth, out of these, you know, 8.1%, and about 21, 22% within the first 24, uh, 48 hours. Equipment and resources for the task is very important. I cannot emphasize, and I put that one on top. I hear this a lot especially from employees. I don't have the, 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 the water hose, I don't have the obstetric change, the gate is not working, this is, so basically, equipment and resources for the task is very important because you define those in your protocols or SOPs. They need to know what you expect, especially what to look for and how it, why is that important. Explain why they need to do specific things. They need to know what to do, especially you, whenever you do either your veterinarian or, or, or your own on the farm, you have to do some training and make sure they do have the knowledge and the skills. And I'll show you through this app how I can think, you know, pinpoint people that are by far better than others, right? We are not you know, we all have different skills and different personality. Calvin management, especially for large operations, requires a lot of teamwork. So communication is crucial there. And know the leading risk factor. So all these four will determine to some extent the prevalence of how many dead calves you have on a farm. When I look at protocols, I define always in my protocol what to do. Right, the protocol is kind of the prescription, the, the, you know, the recipe, what to do. The SOPs, the standard operating procedure, is how you do the protocol, right? How do you implement it? This is just the, the individual doing the work on a farm. And this is what I think is the difference between the top 10% of the farm in the U.S. versus the top bottom 10%. They have very well standardized procedures and everybody follow those. Some of them they have on paper, some of the others just people know how to do this. And then you have individuals, you have individuals, you know, that who is doing this, all this, that they apply the what and the how. So they put all the protocols and the SOPs together. When I go to farms, I, 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 I really like to take pictures, right? I like to take pictures of their Calvin protocol. I, I really do, because there is a huge variation, huge. Remember, about 30% of people cannot see. Most of your employee has vision problems. You probably don't know, right? When I ask these guys, I say, do you have, do they just, they never been in a doctor. They need glasses. So if you set up a protocol with a lot of text, they probably nod your head and say, yeah, yeah. And most humans do not like to read, right? So when I go to farm, I say, this is the protocol. I have only one page. This is the Calvin protocol. And then there is a number of SOPs that are associated with this decision-making process, right? Especially when they are in the red box. When they are in the red box, they are making five or 10 decisions in about 10 minutes. And that determines whether the calf is alive or dead. Right? So it is very important because this is the protocol, and then a lot of pictures that explain the processes. <coughs> this is a, an example when I, we are doing a, a, a research study just on protocols and an SOPs, right? So I go to farms and I ask the question, do you have an established Calvin protocols? And I also include the whole team, the veterinarians, the manager or the owner, and the personnel. I, and, and you can see, actually, the protocol was on the farm, 
whether or not all the employee knows that, sometimes it's not that easy. And it's because no, sometimes they don't know, it's just there is new employees every other week, right? But these are the guys that will implement the SOPs, right? And this is what you see in your records. So and I sometimes explain why do we have the calf or why we are not doing this or why we are not uh, checking calf. Calvin management is about teaching common sense. And teaching common sense is very difficult. I cannot go to Walmart and buy, give me, you know, half a pound of common sense, <laughs> and here it is. Common sense is like you farmers. You grew up on a farm and you know how to do it. It's the experience. When somebody come new to the farm and I had to explain, is that the rear leg or, you know, or the front leg? And I'm gonna explain why is that important. This is crucial when they make decisions, especially do I need to pull or not? If I ask the audience here, I would probably ask you know, a number of people say this is the front and this is the rear legs. And I really wanna, I don't wanna get into a gender discussion in this, but I do see a lot of women working in Calvin management, right? And they have an amazing common sense that sometimes the boys we don't do as well on knowing when the cow has a problem, right? Just knowing that the cow has a problem, that makes a difference, a huge difference in the outcome, right? And especially because they are looking in the eye. This is a severe dystocia cow. So, and I always ask people, well, what do you look in a cow? The guys will look at the, you know, the, the real portion of the cow. The ladies might look the eye, you know, the expression of the cow. She's under stress, you know, the cow has a problem, we need to do something about it. This is the most important. You know, when you go and you do your Calvin management, it is important because backward presentation requires a different approach. And remember that forward or backwards are normal. But when the cow is coming backward, you have to pull it out. As soon as the umbilical cord collapses, he need oxygen. And he might need, you know, if I start breathing with the head down, right? So I, I'll show you now some data on, on that one. So here is what is normal. And I always go to this farm when I, we gave this application, and I think this is normal. Anything that you see different, it's a problem. And then I teach them how to identify the problem. But I start first with what is normal. So either you know forward or backward, right? And you're gonna have a 96% of the time the calf are gonna come like this. But you're gonna have 4% coming backward. If you don't know how to deal with this, you very likely they die. Or they die a few days after, right? And then you have one percent or so about breach. Uh, about 5% of the calf are either, you know, twins or triplets. And this is, you know, common sense. And uh, when we develop this application, we also put a monitor system there. Because some of them, when I read all this protocol, this is what I see. Wait two hours, if you see a problem, then you pull the calf out. The interpretation from the individual, when they see that on a piece of paper, they don't know when time zero is. They wait two hours. Okay, wait two hours from, from when? From 6 a.m., from 2 p.m.? Oh. So we explain very well what is time zero, right? And then from time zero on, we put together another drama this, the green light, the yellow light, and the red light. When the cow is red, you have to do something, right? And the zero time is this. The cow is the, you know, the amniotic sac or showing feet. The cow cannot be for more than two hours you know, in, 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 in active labor. Those are the classic heifers, especially heifers. And remember that heifers behave a little bit different than cows. And I, I, I recall that perhaps it's the same as humans. For those that have kids and be in the delivery room, the second child, you know what's going on. Right? Cows might behave the same way. Heifers got scared and they start pushing much earlier than the birth canal is ready for the calf to go through. So what they run out of energy. You need two things for Calvin, energy and calcium. If you don't have calcium, there is no contraction. 
right? This is why it's important hypocalcemia. And it's important that your cows are not losing body weight prior to calving. It, it is a collapse because you're going to have a lot of this easy pulling. There is dilation, but the cow do not push. We know that parity is a direct associate, but you need to tell your employees how to manage this. You know one of the risk factors that is parity. My first lactation cows are going to have always higher you know, a prevalence or tend to have, you know, higher prevalence than my multiple of cows, second or older uh, lactation. And now the backward presentation is important, especially if I have a backward presentation, the highest prevalence, it comes from this backward presentation. First, you need to know whether this is a forward or it's a backward, and have to record those ones, because these require a different management. As soon as there is dilation and you see the feet, you probably, as there is enough dilation, you gotta pull them out, all right? And Calvin difficulty or Calvin ease, we know this, you know, especially if this is a normal, one would be a normal. You know, if a normal, there are very few dead calf, and as, you know, difficulty increase, yes, you all have more and more, you know, dead calf. And especially how do you manage, you know, male or the bull calf versus, you know, the twins. And uh, so we all know those uh, 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 risk factors. And here is something important, and uh, doing training, right, this is just only um, about 18 farms, about 70 workers that the only task was associated with Calvin management, right? So we do all those training and teach the common sense, and we know that there is a response. So I know that people really know how to do it. They learn the skills to do the uh, Calvin management, and there is a gain in knowledge, a significant gain after the training. So they know better. Is that, can you translate that to have less dead calf? Because I can know a lot, I just don't do it or I don't have the resources to do it. There is a significant effect. If the facilities are in place and the working environment is appropriate, there is a significant association. You know, they will, the almost half of your losses, they will be able to reduce it. I'm gonna mention this and I did mention about working environment. The working environment is just how we human interact in a specific place with our manager, with our coworkers, how we get along, how we work together, right? So here is the same, you know, uh, 70 workers, and, and here is the increase in performance. So I follow up these people for three years, three years, just knowing how they were uh, uh, how they perform as far as looking at the stillbirth. And this is the increase in performance. So I, I did the training, I we improved this, I just follow up whether or not they were able to do it on, on the farms. There is a significant association. As they increase performance, the stillbirth drop. Drop about 2%, right? But I'm gonna pick two people there that I know very well. There is no difference in knowledge and skill from these two individuals. But this is the effect of unresolved conflict. Conflict with manager, conflict with coworker, lack of communication, how that translates in your numbers on the farm. And this is perhaps brings a different dimension about the human element and the complexity when we do have or we try to put something together on the farm. And, uh, and therefore, there is some animal welfare implication. There is direct association how we do things and how we interact with cows, right? When I go to this farm and I start listening the employees or the owner and the manager, this is what I basically listen. And I, I, this doesn't have to have a, an order of priorities, but this is, you know, I, I don't have resources for the task. I want, you know, day off for Christmas. You're milking cows. You can't stop for Christmas. Somebody has to be able to milk cows, right? Some farms do have a day off for Christmas or holidays. I want more money, no show workers. I want to use a cell phone. I don't want to work anymore during the day. I'm gonna go now during the night shift. 
And the owner also has a list of priorities. You gotta show up on time. The no-show work is a problem. It's a problem for the owner, it's a problem for personnel also. There is something in common there, that this is just by listening their feedback is when we start working in this technology, right? So the use of cell phone is, a, is, a, is an issue, and uh, in most of the funds I go, there are different policies in place for a specific those issues and how they manage the use of cell phone. So we just gave them, okay, you wanna use cell phone, now on you're gonna have a, a tablet or an, you know, a, a, um, an Android tablet, and then you're gonna collect data just for the phone. And I'm gonna explain because I did have a few of the employees that do not know how to read or write. But there is something in this technology that these people memorize shapes and colors and they became useful for something, especially to collect quality records that otherwise they might not be able to do it, right? And even maybe your son that has four or five year old or eight or 12, they are better able to change the setting in these devices. They can download an app, right? When I was first put it, I, I tried just to put the app in my cell phone, just to look at when we put it together. I look on YouTube and say, how to download an app? There was a nine-year-old boy explaining how to do that. <laughs> I say, how nice is that? <laughs> and very simple. So this is how the, the, the app has now, from now on I'm gonna talk specific about the app and I'm gonna give you just a glimpse about how it does work and what is the information it collects and how you can process that information and where you can get this, right? So the app has different components and there is, they don't have to write anything any other than numbers. It's a lot about touching the screen, right? Just touching the screen and colors. So there is, quite a bit of information about the cow, a specific calving event, a number of events that they collect for the calf, right? They are just either male, female, alive, alive dead, abortions, and so on. And then there is a, a number of information about colostrum management, right? So all this system, as you go through working in maternity and you start collecting the data, so each one of the employees has the app, they just log in, they have their initial names, they log in, once they log in, I know the time that they are in. Every shift, in and out, they had to log in, right? You know when you download the data when they start working or not. And I did, we did this one for a specific one request. There is a number of operations that they they want their employee to be on time and they want to check when they arrive on the farm, right? And they sometimes pay a bonus based on just by being two minutes or five minutes early, right? As they start working, there is just two major screens there, either new Calvin or a calf, and there is a list of cows, right? When you add a new Calvin, it's because you see the amniotic sac. You see the time zero, either amniotic sac or showing feet, right? And then the cow start developing this, you know, green, yellow, or red light, that this is how many, you know, minutes it's been passed since the employee saw the cow in labor. This is crucial when there is a shift change. Somebody's leaving the farm, 6 a.m., um, out of the farm, and at 6, you know, a.m., there is somebody coming in, right? So they only just leave the tablet, Somebody come again, log it in, they see the list of cows, they know how many you know, minutes the cow has been in labor. And this information goes to the cloud system. So once you download, you, you, you create an account there, you download the application, the application is free, it's an, on their extension website. And then the same account that you create, you use the same account to get your own data, right? To download the data. For this uh, specific research trial, because we really want to know how this is going to work under field condition, right? So we did use 23 personnel from six farms, right? That they were only doing Calvin management. We did have some on-farm records seven days prior to the farm. We did all the training. Then they worked for seven days, just only seven days using the application. And then we did some comparison with this application as far as personnel performance and Calvin event. As we did during our training, 
just how to use this application and how put the same protocols for all these farms. And remember that the application in a way has the SOP, so it's a constant reminder of the protocol. It always tells you what is missing, right? These are the farms that we did. Most of them are either pre-stall or some dry lot uh, uh, farm out in the west. And we follow this particular model, just to do, you know, uh, uh, building uh, effective teams. So we established the Calvin protocols, we did the training and skill and demonstration, and then we just follow up them and how they go through, you know, these trainings. Just employees, once we did this one, they were only working for about seven days with the application. And then we download the data. So since we knew the data that they have before, right, so this is a chart showing the frequency, right, the frequency between the difference between the on-farm records versus the application. So th these apps collect about 52 more data. So you collect more information there. But what we do with this data? You're gonna just pile up information. You gotta find a way that you make a decision. Otherwise, you don't collect it, right? So, and it's important because you collect important information about the calf, the colostrum management, and about the dam, right? And I'm gonna show you a few examples now, later on, because you get this in an Excel file. And every time that they touch, it's time sensitive. You give it time records on the Excel file, right? So I'm gonna give you an example how this data, you can make decision about how the employees are working with cows. So here is an example of compliance with time in labor. And we clearly define in our protocol, time in labor is when you see the cow, you know, time zero, this is Calvin, right? When you see the amniotic sac or the water bag, and the end of time in labor is when the, you know, the calf is on the ground, right? So what you see there, these are 22 employees, right? Each one of the employees has a particular fingerprint of management, right? All of the employees, if you look, we look for less than two hours, right? We don't want the cow to be more than two hours in labor when they are, uh, uh, after they show feed. But there is a number of employees that look at this. It's 18 hours. This is the minimum, the maximum, and this is the minimum. This is the average. When I look at the farm, these are two, four, five farms, right? You have five farms there. Then you can look the difference in management, how they are you know, the frequency of checking cows in the pen. And this is during the night shift and during the day shift, right? If I'm gonna select my employees for Calvin management, I want this. They got little variation. And most of the time they are about right. I probably don't wanna have something like this or something like this, right? So there is unique variation within farm and then different farm has different variation. This is important because since the app collect when you feed the calostrum and the time that the calf is born, right? Now you can keep track in compliance, right? And then you start looking at the data. So these are Calvin personnel. Remember, they, they were 23 personnel, but not all of them, they were feeding calostrum. And this is the time from birth when you, you know, from birth to feeding calostrum, right? And then you can see that people in, in this particular farm, all the protocol are, they have to have calostrum within three hours, right? They all have to have their calostrum within three hours. But this is the reality. There are calf that are fed calostrum the following day, a number of them, right? And this also associated, remember, calostrum is one of the critical components for replacement program. They have to, you know, provide the calostrum. And also there is variation within farms. There are farms in general that do better than others. But if I look, I would probably select these employees, right? And I would probably have some talking points, like some of our farms are doing using this application at the end of the week or at the end of the month, they look at the records and they have specific talking points 
with employees. Why or what happened here? Why we are so late on this? And how can we improve this? Right? So this application, once they start using it, you have a lot of the information that you can put it together just to see how things are done on the farm. Another thing that we look at in this is a direct associate with management. And in, in all of your farm, you don't have constant calving, so meaning every month you do not have the same calving for the following month. There is a seasonal calving pattern. Right, especially for those that are more, you know, close to the southern portion of the U.S. So cow has to synchronize because they don't get pregnant during the summer, so they get more pregnant during the, you know, cold season. But that has an impact in this operation. And what we see is the Calvin personnel ratio. This is coming directly from the app, looking at how many employees I have in a shift and how many Calvins do I have for that particular shift, right? And as I increase the Calvin personnel ratio, I go more than one, right, or more than two, I would say, then it skyrocket the number of missing or incomplete records. And this is very basic because they just, there is too many things to do. I just need to deal with the calf. I don't have any more help, right? But this is important because sometimes you look at your own records and you just don't know whether this is a missing or is an incomplete. I rather pick the missing record, and I really don't want the incomplete or the incorrect, right? Because that leads you to the you know wrong decision. Literacy for this particular individual was very high, so 90%. I would say they were able, or more than 98%, were able to write numbers and read, and that they challenge with text. They really like the 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 the, the phone, and they really like to use it. And there is a generation, perhaps a generation gap there. Younger individuals, especially if they do have already a cell phone that is touch screen, they know how to use it right away. Person that do not have this one, it takes longer. She has to learn you know, all the loops and how to use the, the, the application. So it is good for, for some of the employees. Some of the other might be a, a little bit of challenge, especially if they don't know how to use a, a, a touch screen cell phone. Personnel and work shift. This is another example that is, is very important for us because 80% of our losses is just the hour before and the hour after the shift change. When I look at a stillbirth, there is a number of them that they die just within those two hours when you change shift. Right? It's the same when you go to the doctor, to the delivery room. You don't want to go when they are changing shift. They probably don't see you. right? And if I'm a cow, probably I don't want to go through again. So, but these are the reality in our, in our, in our farm. So a shift of 12 hours, you know, 10, 9, 8 hours, and different combination of shift. The 8 hours that there is not overlap to some of the 9 hours that they overlap one hour. And they overlap one hour just to communication. So to make sure the guy is leaving, they tell what is going on, the guy is coming in. Right? A different combination and a different... The, every farm organized tasks in different ways. So in farms, everybody does everything. And this is how they organize their day off, right? <coughs> and you have to do a lot of cross training. And there are specific farms that it has a specific assigned task for a specific employees. Milking, Calvin, Fresh, TMR. And they only do TMR, they only do Calvin, or they only do milk. Right? When we look at data, from this, this is just one farm. When we look at data, at, you know, the effect of communication at time of personal shift change. So this is the hour before and the hour after in a 12-hour shift. I look at just the two hours, a significant associate higher prevalence of stillbirth than the rest of the shift. So if I'm a cow, I don't want to go through labor at 6 p.m. I know the guys are changing shift. Right? Cows do not know this, but there is a direct association. And you can look this information and look, you know, how communication and how you organize your farm and uh, whether or not it might be a, 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 an implication, a specific associate with their calf. There. We did an economics uh, uh, analysis 
And this is whether or not you use the application. This is regardless what you use the application. This is more associated with personnel performance, Calvin personnel performance, and turnover, right? This is how many new people you have on the phone, right? I want, this is my best teamwork that I was able to find. 95% performance, I'm gonna give them about 5% room for error, right? And I have very low turnover, very low. I suppose what I see the average that is 85 performance and 30% turnover, right? When you look at the numbers and you implement this in a large operation, this is just for a 2,000 car operation, right? You may have, because of performance and communication, right? You lose about 160 sick cars. Direct associate between the shift and between, you know, communication issue. That is translated in a significant amount of money, right? You know, about $40,000 a cow. Direct associate to the human element, right? How we do things on a particular farm. If you wanna get the application, here is the website. There is a, a and again, like I mentioned, you had to sign in and, uh, and enroll uh, at your farm. It's free, you just download the application, and then there is a way that you collect the, uh, you will get an email after you download the application that you're ready to go, and then you use the same information to collect the data, to get your own data from the same website. And just two final remarks. And I, I, I strongly believe you had to monitor on the farm. If you don't measure or you don't monitor, it's very difficult to manage things because you just don't know, right, whether you are doing okay, you are doing average, or you are doing a, a bad. And timing and accuracy of data is always de dependent on the individual collecting the data, right? So regardless of the system, you can have very good people collecting with this as equal as collecting on paper, right? But the individual will determine a lot of the quality data that you collect on the farm. And with that, I will just finish with this the last slide. And Calvin management requires teamwork. And for effective teamwork, we all have a job to do. And with that, I'll take any question you may have. Which the, the, the question is how many downloads we have in the app. They, we just place it up in the website. <laughs> probably a week before coming here. So I probably have now maybe five, the, the people that I work with, that they have it. But no, it's just, we just open up. Yes. So are these people using a dedicated tablet or does everyone use their own cell phone? No. no this what? is very, very, very <laughs> good question. And uh, they don't use their own cell phone. The farm provide a tablet. And remember, this is only available for Android, right? And um, there is a Galaxy 3 tablet. And I'd say the, the tablet stay on the farm. So they just use it. They, they, they can do it on their own cell phone. And, um, and the tablet, you have to have either Wi-Fi connection, or if you're using the cell phone, has to have a data plan. Because at the end of the day, you synchronize and send the data, right? Either you can synchronize every 15 minutes or at the end of the day. Either way, e either, so the question is, once you download the application, we need to be connected to send the data. So the application will store information in the device, and as soon as you are connected, it sends it out. 
if you have a cell phone that is connected already and you synchronize, it already synchronized and send the data. So either way of the two. Uh, do you plan on making it useful for iPhones or just Androids? Yes, we did a survey. And um, to, the question is whether we want to use for uh, iPhone as well. And it, it will. But it requires a different, it, it's a little bit different the way that the people download. We did two tests. One, asking the question, what do you use on the farm? And it was a little bit more Android than iPhone. But then we did a testing on doing the download. Downloading an app in an iPhone is a little bit different and complicated. You had to sync your app with a computer, right? You had to follow specific things. And uh, the Android is much easier. You just click on the link and it downloads. So when we did the testing, people didn't have many problems with Android, but they had a lot of issues downloading with with uh, iPhone. But it will be in both versions. Now it's only Android. How long do you think it'll take before you get to the iPhone version? The iPhone, it probably will take at least four or five months more. Okay. At least. Did you can do it as long as you have internet connection. Yep. It doesn't matter. Is it, is it available in Spanish and English? It is in both languages, Spanish and English at the moment. Well, thank you.